bye-bye. Come on, declare. So long, bye-bye. So long, bye-bye. Goodbye to the pain and the sorrow. So long, bye-bye. 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 Goodbye to the pain. Bye-bye. Goodbye to the song. Bye-bye. Goodbye to the pain. Bye-bye. Goodbye to the song. Bye-bye. Goodbye, fear. Bye-bye. You're welcome here. Bye-bye. Goodbye, fear. Bye-bye. You're welcome here. Bye-bye. Come on. You are the God of miracles. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Go ahead and have a seat. It is so good to see your beautiful faces again. She took my line. <laughs> Turn to your neighbor and tell him, you look beautiful this morning. If you're in need of a rhapsody, go ahead and raise your hand and we have one of the ushers bring one to you. But we ran out. Amen. So today's word from the daily devotion neither helpless nor forsaken turn to your neighbor and tell them don't worry god got you so from the word of god hebrews 13 verse 5 it reads let your conversation be without covetousness, and be content with such things as he have for he had said i would never leave thee nor forsake thee this is absolutely remarkable the Lord says he'll never in any degree leave you helpless nor forsake you. So if you ever have that feeling that he left you or you felt helpless or you felt that he has forsaken you, it's not that he has forsaken you or he has left you. It's that you have left him. Praise the Lord. So to amplify classic translation, let us know he repeated the clause, I will not, three times. For emphasis, I will not in any way fail you nor give you up nor leave you without support. I will not, I will not, I will not in any degree leave you helpless nor forsake nor let you down. Relax my hold on you, surely not. So this very scripture brings to mind the words of Jesus in John chapter 14 verse 18. It reads, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Yes, Jesus is in heaven, but he didn't leave us without support. He didn't leave us desolate, bereaved, forlorn, or stranded. He sent us the Holy Spirit. Turn to your name and tell him we got the Holy Spirit. So not only to be with us, the Holy Spirit, but to live in us. In one of our further study books, John 14, verse 16 from the Amplified Classic, it reads, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another comforter, counselor, helper, intercessor, advocate, strengthener, and standby, that he may remain with you forever. It says forever, remain with you forever. This is what the word said. Now, and that same spirit has become your courage, your help, your sufficiency, and your all. When you're in doubt, when you're in the downtime. Or you're feeling down challenges remember that same spirit has become your courage allow it to encourage you that you may seek continuously our Lord Jesus Christ through his word the other further study book it says uh, John 14 26 it reads but the comforter which is the Holy Ghost whom the Father will send in my name he shall teach you all things turn to your name and tell him all things not some things not little things but the word says all things so whatever all that matters in your life in your family your career you know your workplace the word said it will teach you the holy ghost will teach you all things 
Praise God. And uh, just finishing up the verse, and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. So trust him with your life. Fellowship with him, and he will make you successful in all things. He says he will relax his hold on you. That means he will always be on you. Meaning he's with you all the way in your journey of life. Sing to it that you win always. Say, I win always. He knows how to take care of you. So his help is something you shouldn't doubt at all. It's guaranteed. His help. The Bible says in the book of Psalms 46 verse 1, it says, God is a refuge and strength a very present help in trouble present help when you are in need he is there for you all we need to do is to tap into that source that is in you say it's in me, it's in me. the Holy Spirit lives in you so if you ever find yourself in trouble or a difficult situation be assured you're not alone say I'm not alone, I'm not alone. he'll get you out or show you what to do to come out victoriously hallelujah the Holy Spirit is your supreme advantage. So take advantage of the Holy Spirit. This is one spirit that will never, uh, you know, be overwhelmed with you taking advantage. He's not a person. He's the Holy Spirit. And he don't mind you taking advantage of him. Take advantage. He's our refuge and strength. Acknowledge and appreciate his work in your life and love him with all your heart. To say, I love him. So go ahead and bow your heads, close your eyes, and I want you to stretch out your hand to your neighbor and confess this with me. Say, Dear Holy Spirit, I acknowledge you as the one who leads me in the way of success and victory. Thank you, for you are my supreme advantage, refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. I mightily helped of you. And therefore, confident that my progress, prosperity, and advancement is for all time. In Jesus' name. Let us pray. Father, we thank you, Holy Spirit, for this upward and forward life that we're living. And it is only through you, Holy Spirit, that live it in us, through the word of God, through our Lord Jesus Christ, our Father. Thank you that we are conquerors, we are victorious. The reality of this world, Father, there are challenges, but we will never elevate the challenges. But we will elevate only your word, Father, that we will conquer everything that comes our way. Father, we love you, we adore you, we thank you, we glorify you this morning, Father. Lord, we lift up our state, and our government father whatever decision they are making right now let it be all accordingly to your word thank you holy spirit for your help through them thank you uh, holy spirit for your your help with our families our congregation our ministry father our community that are in need right now lord we can only rely on you father and we thank you for your for your love lord we lift up our nation we lift up our president we live our vice president, every staff member, every decision that they are making that will, you know, come and play into our lives, Father, Holy Spirit. We thank you for your leading, and we thank you for your, you know, for your, your help and showing them the way that we ought to lead the people. We lift up our military out there, and who's out there serving your country, you know, faithfully. We lift up their families, their loved ones, and we thank you, Father, for your protection over each and every one of them. Father, today, as we worship you, Holy Spirit, continue to manifest yourself. Teach us, lead us. You are the master communicator, Holy Spirit, and we thank you for your presence. Pray this in the mighty name of Jesus, and we all say, amen and amen. Go ahead and focus your attention to our TV for our video uh, in healing. John Vessels. I'm 52 years old. I'm from South Africa in Randburg. I came to the healing school in 2010. 
It all started in 1984. My husband was driving the car and we were involved in a car accident. And um, I was taken to the hospital. Um, but at the time, doctors didn't diagnose me at that point in time. But as time went on, I experienced severe headaches, migraine headaches, and doctors did test. And it's when I was diagnosed with um, a spinal cord injury. And I had to undergo a cervical spine fusion in 1997. Later on, maybe 10 years later, I experienced the same symptoms. And when I went back to the doctor, doctor said I needed another operation at the C4, C5, C6, and C7 levels on my spine. And doctor explained that it's very risky. I will be paralyzed or I will lose my life on the operating table. Slowly but surely, she was unable to perform the duties as a mother that she used to perform, cook for us, clean, laundry, be a wife to my, to my dad, to be a mother to us. Um, I had yeah, to take up basically the responsibility of my mother. Condition deteriorated so bad that I had to use about 30 painkillers a day. My daughter had to help me wash. Sometimes she will drag me to the bathtub as tiny as she was, trying to help me to bath. I couldn't drive anymore. I couldn't turn my neck left, right, or center. I couldn't do the house cleaning anymore. I was put on permanent disability at work. I was now only waiting, as the doctor said, you go home and wait for your dying day because I can't have your blood on my hands. So it's when I was watching TV at home and I saw Pastor Chris, the healing school, and it's when I registered to attend the healing school in 2010. When I came to the healing school, wow, it was a different environment entirely. I said to myself, my breakthrough has come. And then came the day of the healing service, which I was very excited. The service was awesome. And then the man of God, Pastor Chris, entered the auditorium and there were shouts and joy. People were just crying and with expectation shouting. And then the men of God, Pastor Chris, started ministering to people one by one. People were falling under the anointing, getting up, rejoicing. And then the man of God, Pastor Chris, got to me. Wow, what an experience. When he touched me, I just felt the warmth all over my body and I fell under the anointing. When I got up, all the pain has left my body. After we left the healing service, I didn't drive back home, my mom drove home instead. And um, that, that brought so much joy to me, you know, because my mom couldn't look left, she couldn't look right. My dad was even surprised to see, wow, his wife is actually driving again, you know. So attending the healing school um, really restored us as a family. I went back to the doctor and it, for MRI scan, and when I got that results, it shows spinal cord is normal. Now I can do everything I couldn't do before. I can drive, I can bend, I can turn my neck left, right, I can do house chores, I can cook, I can work, back at work, everything. I am no more disabled, I am able. I want to say to the partners, there's a scripture in the book of Matthew 25, 36, where the Lord says, I was sick and you visited me. Then you, 
the partner will say, Lord, when were you sick? And then the Lord will remind you, remember the healing school. So I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. You too can bring healing to the sick and depressed around the world by sharing this testimony video to all those in your sphere of contact. To share this testimony video, kindly use the link now showing on your screen. Praise the Lord. How many of you enjoyed that healing video? Amen. How about a round of applause for our Lord? You know, with the word, like pastors say, stick to the word and you'll always come back with a testimony. Stick to the word and you'll always come back with a testimony. In my life, that, that statement has been so true. I've stuck to the word. There are certain places in the Bible where the Bible says cling to the word, cleave to it, seize the word of God take it and run with it and you'll always come back with a testimony hallelujah just go ahead and worship your hands lift up your hands and worship the father father we worship you father
Praise God. Let's go ahead and pray. Father, we just give you glory, praises, and honor. We thank you, Father, for who you are to us. All your blessings and all your benefits. Today, I thank you for the work of the Holy Spirit, Barak HaKodesh. We thank you with your presence here. God did not leave us alone, for he has given you to us. You are our teacher, our mentor, our comforter, our advocate. And today, I thank you for opening up the hearts of your children and their mind, that you will continue to plow up the fallow ground to remove any pebbles, any rock, and any stone that come in to hold the word off. But you're preparing their hearts so that they may receive a good word. Let today be a word that they shall receive with such great thanksgiving. If there's anyone that has been searching, Father, for your answer, an answer to a deep question that they may have, only the Holy Spirit is able to do that, for He is a master communicator. He is able to communicate to each and every one at their level and where they are at, and only He can make that happen. I thank you for using me as an instrument this morning. I thank you for Pastor Dad. I thank you for this opportunity that He has given me to allow me on this platform to share a word in season that your children may receive it, they may grasp it with such thanksgiving, that they may run with it. We love you, Father, and thank you so much for who you are in us. We pray this in Yeshua's mighty name, and the saints of God say, Amen. Well, it's so great to see each and every one of you. Very good. You all look beautiful. Very good-looking people here, and also I'm pretty sure good-looking people that is watching us live on our page. And I want to acknowledge that, you know, we have some first-time visitors. We want to thank you. You know, if you could please stand to your feet. We want to say thank you. Welcome, welcome. We love you so much. God loves you. It's by divine appointment. We thank you so much. Thank you for gracing us with your presence. And those of you who are watching us live, we thank you. If this is your first time tuning in and watching us, we want to thank you so much. Again, it's God's divine appointment. It's probably something that you've been looking for to hear a message. And today I'm here, so I'm grateful to God. So our topic today is one that I'm pretty sure many has been searching but also, I wanted to get a little bit deep into the Word because I've been searching for so long myself. You know, we read the Word, and then there are things that still doesn't make sense. And so my topic is, is there life after death? Is there life after death? And that's what I want to be able to cover today. And if I'm not able to cover it today, hopefully Pastor Dad will allow me up next week to finish it, right? But we have to be very obedient. From the book of Genesis 7, Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, and you may have it on our screen. And so it says, and God breathed the breath of life into Adam, and he became a living soul. Now, some translations have being, and he became a living being. But what I want to touch up on is the word soul, right? He breathed, you know, God breathed the breath of life into Adam, and he became a living soul. So, you know, in the biblical, we see that Adam doesn't have a soul in there. It says it's a being. Now, what is a soul? A soul is a person that is a living being. So, literally, it's a soul that breathes, right? The breathing substance of being. So, that's what a soul is, and I'll cover more on that. But before I go on, I want to share the word of the name Adonai, all right? because it's going to touch right in the breath, the breath of life. You know, many of us, you know, we wonder what is the name of Adonai for us Christians, right? Christians, we refer to him as Jehovah, Elohim, Adonai, right? In Hebrew, you know, they refer to him as Hashem, okay? So the more advanced, we use the word Hashem. But when you look into the Hebrew writing, you will find that the name of God is written in a way that it cannot be pronounced. You can't really say his name. So it's written in Hebrew, and you can't say it. But we call him God. We call him Papa God. We call him Father. We refer to him as that. And then, you know, the Jewish people, when you ask someone, when you ask a Jewish person, what is the name of God? And they're saying, we can't say it because it was written in a way that you can't pronounce but the closest way that you can come to pronouncing the name of God is when you inhale and you exhale. So you try. Inhale. Exhale. You hear that sound? That's as close as you can say the name of God. It's a breathing in. 
That's his name. So whether you know that or not, and the word says, and God breathed the breath of life into Adam, and he became a living soul. God put himself in Adam, that breath of life. Daily when you breathe in, when you exhale, you hear that, you're actually saying God's name. You see how intelligent of a God that we serve, that as he created man, there he put his life in them. And in his life, there is his name. <sighs> Daily you are saying his name, whether you know that or not. And that's as close as you can come to saying his name. Amen? You know, one day a rabbi received a phone call from a college student. And he was on his way because he needed to ask, the, you know, this rabbi a question, right? And, you know, and so when he got there and he pulled up and he came up to the rabbi and he said, Rabbi, am I going to go to hell? And the rabbi said, why, I don't know. What did you do? And he said, no, I'm serious. Am I going to go to hell? I mean, I, my roommate back in college, he's an evangelist, and he keeps telling me that, you know, if, if I don't convert, then I'm going to go to hell, right? And so the rabbi is like, well, isn't there a teacher on campus that you can ask that question when you drove so far away to ask me that question? He said, well, you know, I did. Well, what did the teacher say? Well, he said he doesn't believe in hell. And you don't like his answer? Well, that's not an answer, right? He's upset. He's like, well, that's not an answer because if I end up in hell, what am I going to say to God? Is because my teacher didn't believe in hell, right? So am I going to hell or not? And the question is, are we going to hell? Do we even know what it is? What happens after life? Is there life after death? You know, a young woman, her husband died at such a young age. They have two children. And she was so depressed. She went out and she sought counseling for years because she could not live with the fact that her husband was gone and she continued to live on you know, with his memory. But her girls were growing. And now the girls were asking the question, Mommy, where's Daddy? But she has a Catholic friend. And so she asked her friend, she said, you know, the girls are growing and they're asking me questions. And they're saying, you know, where's Daddy? I don't know what to say to them. And so the Catholic friend tells her, well, just tell the girls that, you know, their dad is in paradise. And that he's with God and the angels and yada, yada, yada. And so, you know, the widow thought, well, that sounds beautiful. That's really nice. But then she thought, she's like, wait, wait a minute. But then that's, you know, Catholicism, right? That's Catholics belief. So she decided to call her pastor. So she called her pastor, and the pastor agreed to meet, and she had to drive like three hours to get to the pastor just to ask that question. Is there life after death? And the pastor responded, well, you know, I personally don't, but my wife does. So you, either way, you know, you can pick. She was so offended. She was so offended by her pastor's response. And so she was very polite, right? She didn't question him. And so she went back home. So she met up with a friend, and she, you know, shared with a couple of her friends that, you know, I didn't go there to ask for his opinion or his wife's opinion. I want to know what our religion has to say. Is there life after death? Is there life after death? Anyway, the question should be, what do we know about life after death? First thing is there life after death? It may sound like a ridiculous question, but really think about it. Is there life after death? One thing we know is life is alive. Life lives. Life can't die. And just like death can't live, life can't die. Living things live. So back to the question. Is there life after death? I mean, it sounds like it's a nonsense question after I've gone over those things with you. Is there life after death? And is there death after life? Can a living thing die? I mean, that's a good question. And the answer is no. 
It can't. A living thing can't die. So here's what happened. All right, so we have the soul, as I went over with you in the book of Genesis, as God breathed that life into Adam, right? So the soul, that is the living being, it enters the body, and the body borrows life from the soul. So inherently, the body is not a living thing, but the soul is a living thing. Are you all following along? All right, very good. As a teacher, we always want to make sure that, you know, our people are following along, right? So again, we know that the body is dead. It needs soul. It needs that life in it. So the soul is a living thing. And when they separate and they go their own way, the body returns to dust. From dust you are, and to dust you shall return. And the soul goes back to being a soul among souls right so you can call it heaven or you can call it hell but what we're describing is the continued life of the living soul so is there life after death what dies is dead and what's alive lives so what lives on that's another question so what lives on well every aspect of your life your emotions, your memories, your relationships, your wisdom, your knowledge, your pains and your pleasures, they all live on because they are all aspects of life and life only knows how to live, right? So life can't die. Life lives. The bodies go back to the dust and from dust you are to dust that you return, that's the nature of the body. All right, so I'm teaching you the difference of the nature of the body and that of the soul. All right, so it is not a living thing. Okay, so the body is not a living thing. It goes back to being a mineral on the ground. All right, but the soul always was always alive and it will continue to live. And that's why when someone takes their last breath, right, what happens to the body? It dies. And then your soul and your spirit ascend. All right. We're also told that in the future, when the Mishiach, okay, which is the Messiah, that when he returns, there will be a resurrection of the body. So the soul does not need to be resurrected because it lives. But the soul will return to its resurrected, glorious body. A body, you know, is one that disintegrates. But resurrection is restructuring of that same body and it put in it's put back together and when that happens the body is created by god and those bodies will never die again that's what we call the resurrected body so we talk about as the soul goes to heaven and the spirit the soul can only have its you know so much reward but it's when it comes back, when the Lord resurrect your body from the ground, okay, it's been resurrected, and then your soul returns for it when the Messiah returned, that's when you have this glorious body that will live forever. I mean, unless somebody eats from the tree again, then it starts the process, right? But then, of course, in a resurrection, we're not going to have that tree, all right? Because the Lord is going to create a body that never dies, Amen. So a resurrected body will not have the element of death to it. So it will live forever and its soul will come back and enjoy the reward of its resurrection. So for those of you who don't really know what happens after death, okay? So you see the separation of the soul and the body. And when the Lord returned after the tribulation, which is a resurrection, there too, where it says that, you know, the dead will now rise up. What is the dead? It's the dead, which is the body. It will rise up and your soul will meet and there will have your glorious body. So a resurrected body will not have any more death and the soul will unite and return to its glorious body. Amen. So to make it a little easier, because Jesus loved to talk stories, he loved parables, right? 
So I'll use it this way so that you can continue to connect the soul and the body. So a princess marries a peasant. For those of you peasant, is someone that works in the farm. I don't want to say he's poor, but anyway. But a princess marries a peasant, right? So they go to live in his farm. And then after two weeks, the peasant noticed how sad his wife is, right? He doesn't want to question her. You know, he thinks himself, well, what could possibly make her so sad? So in his, you know, peasant orientation or his mindset, right, you know, he assumes, he makes the assumption that, uh, you know, I think she's sad because there are not enough potatoes, right? So he goes out and he works super hard to bring in potatoes, many more potatoes. So as he brings in more potatoes, he noticed that she's still not happy, right? So now he's questioning himself like, oh, why is she still not happy? She's still, why is she so sad? And then he thought, in his own peasant mindset, in his own mind, right? His orientation, he said, oh, silly me, right? She doesn't want more potatoes. She wants tomatoes. So he goes out and he works even harder to bring in more tomatoes to make her happy, right? And so he brings the tomato in, but she's not any happier. So he figured, again, not asking her any questions, so he figured, well, you know, maybe she's mad because there are leaks in the house and all things that I need to fix. And so he goes on his merry way. He fixes the leaks, builds a roll, fixes the barn, does all that he does. And then when he's all done, he noticed she's more sad. She is so sad. And after all, she's got even more sadder. Finally, he loses his patience and he said, listen, you know, I've done everything for you. I did everything. I worked so hard for you. I bought you potatoes, tomatoes, tomatoes. I built this. I fixed everything to make you happy. But what could possibly be wrong? How could you not be happy here with me? And so she says, I was raised in a palace. And in the palace, we had the greatest philosophers we had teachers and thinkers who came to deliver lectures, and it was a pleasure. We had the greatest orchestras, music, all sort of you could think of, who came to perform. And we had the most exotic plants in the royal garden. These are things that I miss. I'm a princess. And when I see you trying to make me happy, by giving me potatoes, tomatoes, and fixing all these things up, it makes me even sadder because I realize that you have no idea what it takes to make a princess happy. So this is an example of a godly soul from God who is meshed into one with the body here on earth. The godly soul is a princess. The body is a very devoted husband, but it is a peasant. The body feels the soul's sadness. Sometimes we call it guilt. Sometimes we call it conscience. We call it search for meaning, finding ourselves. But really what it is, the soul is unhappy and the body is trying to please the soul. But what does the body know? The body only assumes that it is having more potato and tomato that will make the soul happy, right? But the soul becomes sadder. So what is the solution? Well, when the princess marries the peasant, her father, the king, should send along with the princess little pieces of the palace, some royal things or stuff from her royal home, so that on the farm, the princess will feel somewhat at home. At least she will have something to remind her that she's a princess. And that's what God does for us. He sends our soul here down to earth, and he sends pieces of heaven to remind us of who we are. So what are those pieces from heaven that God sends to us? It's his instructions. His written word, 
to remind us of our heavenly home to be in touch with him to remind us that we came from above that we came from a royal palace where our loving father awaits our return you know the psalmist spoke of our soul as the very most inmost person in Psalm 103 verse 1 Psalm 103 verse 1 and it says praise the Lord my soul all my inmost being praise his holy name Psalm 103 you know Jesus spoke of the inestimable value of the human soul and he simultaneously literally he taught that the soul and the body will be united for either eternal life or in case without God in Matthew 10 verse 28 and it says do not be afraid of those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul he said but rather be afraid of the one who can destroy both the body and the soul okay be afraid of one that can destroy the body that can destroy the body and the soul in hell and so we're reminded of who we are but look how loving of a father is. And so in today's lesson, I pray that now you understand a little bit of difference of the soul and of the body. You're a princess and you're a prince. You have a father who has sent you down from heaven. And in the body, I know there's a tug of war that's going on. But do know that he has sent you peace of heaven. There are pieces of heaven that he has given you to remind you that you are a son of God, that you are a daughter of God. And one day he will return and he awaits you in that glorious resurrected body. Amen. Praise God. Well, that concludes my message. I would love to continue, but when pastor does this, it means stop. I'm very obedient. Amen. You know, for those of you who have been questioning, you know, if you have not made Jesus your Lord and Savior, you know, I would like to walk you in. I would like to introduce you to Jesus. If you don't even know who Jesus is, well, perhaps this is the reason why, divine appointment. You're watching. Some of us are here. If you've not made Jesus your Lord and Savior, you want to know. Literally, what risk do you have? There's no risk. No risk at all. But, you know, if you're embarrassed because someone's looking, well, Jesus said, you know, if you're going to be embarrassed of me, then I will be embarrassed of you. I mean, there's something great at stake. You are a prince. Only now today that you've learned that you have been sent of God to this earth. And I would like to introduce Jesus, our Lord and Savior. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He didn't say, I am a way. A means plural there are other ways you can get to the father but he said in order to come to the father you have to go through me because I am the way the truth and that life no one goes to the father except through me and the Lord have sent his son to earth he was our peace he was our prince he loved us so much he came to reconcile to bring people to his father to mesh us together with the Father. And as he ascended, he didn't leave us, he didn't forsake us. He said, I have to go, but there is someone that I will leave here on earth with you, and that is Ruach HaKodesh. He's the Holy Spirit. So Jesus didn't leave us as infant, as if he didn't care. He cared enough because he knew our weakness. But he knew that we needed the word, but he needed someone, that we needed someone to help us, to teach us, to guide us, to lead us. He left the Holy Spirit. Today, the Holy Spirit is ever so alive and present in our lives. He is the one that speaks to you. There is difference between self-driven and spirit-led. When you are, you know, when you are self-driven, it's you're working it, your, your strength, it's too much. But we, when you are led, there's peace. Allow the Holy Spirit to lead you. If that is you and that's what you've been seeking, you've been looking for answers. Well, this is it. There's so many things that is happening in this world and we want to make sure, we don't want to assume that you're all born again and that you receive, you know, the Lord and Savior. Just like that young man who had to drive over to the rabbi, am I going to go to hell? He said, I have an evangelist, you know, who's my roommate. And it's like, he keeps talking about it. And now I'm thinking about it. 
I think that's a good thing to be thinking about it. But if that is you, I want you to say this prayer with me. To say, Dear Lord, I declare and I profess that you are the Lord of my life. I declare that you're the precious Son of God who was crucified on the cross, who died, and on the third day, you were resurrected. Your resurrection gave me life and gave me victory. Your blood has covered and erased my past. I am now a new creation in Christ. Amen. Thank you. If you say that prayer with me, welcome and congratulations. The word says that, you know, thousands of angels, even for one soul, they are rejoicing for you. If that is you and you made Jesus your Lord and Savior, we welcome you into the house of God and get connected. What you don't want to do is receive Jesus and then you do not connect, you know, with a church or like a Bible study because what happens is that you end up going right back into doing the same thing that you've done before. You don't want that. The word is so important. You've heard today. God has given you pieces of heaven to connect you to heaven, to remind you of your royal priesthood, to remind you of who you are and how precious you are in his sight. He is coming and we know he's coming very soon. And so stay connected. Reach out to us. We have our phone number on our screen. That's 808-225-5920. You can also inbox us. We'd like to connect with you and get you connected with our Bible studies. We'd like to dig deep into the Word and just going to guide you on so that you know who you really are. Never make an assumption like this man, right, who's trying so hard to please his wife because he doesn't understand. How will you know if a priest is not sent? That's exactly what the Holy Spirit had mentioned to Philip. How would they know if a priest has not been sent? So we are sending our people. You're hearing from us now. Make that choice today. Never leave without making Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior. Amen. Let's go ahead and pray. Father, we thank you so much for such an amazing word this morning. We give you glory. We give you praises. You are God of the universe, King of the universe, and we're so grateful. Thank you for all that you have done for us. Again, your word says, what shall we say unto the Lord for all his benefits? For all his blessing upon us, except we shall lift up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. We call upon the name, Father, Hashem, Adonai, Elohim, Yehovah. We thank you for who you are in our lives. We thank you for your precious word that we receive with such great thanksgiving. Thank you for the clarification. Thank you for teaching us this morning as you have put those words upon my mouth, Father. Not I, as John have said, I decrease so that you may increase. We pray this in Yeshua's mighty name. Amen. Praise the Lord. How many of us enjoy the message? Let's open a big hand for our Father in heaven. Hallelujah. So before I go on to our tithes and offering, uh, first of all, I want to thank uh, Pastor Mom for such an awesome message. Thank you for reminding us there is life after death. And from now on, I'm not going to eat potatoes. I'm not going to eat tomatoes. <laughs> but before our tithes and offering, uh, raise your hand if you need of an envelope. And uh, let me just make a couple of announcements before we get into our tithes and offering. Uh, just want to... Now that we still have our cell groups, uh, cell group is another, uh, uh, you know, just another uh, avenue for us to teach more of the Word of God, get deep into the Word of God. We have uh, about uh, five groups right now, so if you want to join us in that Bible study, we have uh, all men's, and uh, we have a co-ed, and uh, females only, so just see one of the ushers, and they can direct you more with uh, information on our cell group. But my cell group is on Tuesday men's only uh, women are welcome but you gotta sit in the back <laughs> not unless you bring a, a pink box with those white buns with red meat inside praise God I'm just kidding so uh, see one of the if you uh, want to join us in uh, one of our cell groups 
Pastor Mom has her, her hers on too, even on Zoom. We have a couple of them on Zoom, so please uh, get connected with one of our cell groups. Uh, so it ties an offering. 2 Corinthians 9 7, the famous 2 Corinthians 9 7 from the Living Bible. And I wanted to read it from the Living Bible because it's the Living Bible, it's alive. So everyone must make up his own mind as to how much he should give. Uh, don't force anyone to give more than he really wants to. For cheerful givers are the ones God prizes. I have a story to tell about this the scripture. So one time uh, I asked one of my boys if he could massage my feet. <laughs> so if they massage my feet, the very next day somehow, the foot that he massaged, it, it came more blessed. It came more blessed, uh, the foot that, uh, that he massaged. So I, I put him uh, on the side, uh, I think probably that same day. Then I asked him, son, did you massage my feet wholeheartedly, cheerful, cheerfully? But he didn't answer. But that kind of went on to, to explain the word. You know, when the word of God is not only talking about tithes and offering, about giving, you know, funding funds, but he's talking about giving, you know, uh, being a, a good giver in service, how we serve one another. So from then on, my son started massaging my foot real, I mean, amazingly. For about two weeks, then I had to remind him again about, the, you know, 2 Corinthians 9, 7. So praise God. <laughs> Do we have our tithes? Go ahead and uh, just hold up your tithes and offering. Let me just pray a blessing over it. Father, we just thank you for your blessing. Thank you that you have given us so we can be a blesser. Lord, we are so honored. Bless their hearts. You know, bless their giving. Does that they give, they give wholeheartedly to your ministry. Father, we thank you and we honor you. Lord, return a hundredfold for them. Or return the favor upon them, Father. Let your blessing be great and mighty over their giving. Lord, we love you. We honor you. And our God's children say, Amen. If we could all please rise to our feet and just hold the hand of your neighbor as we conclude this service.